Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. In my previous 164 skill review, I showed you a 1970 Plymouth GTX. And today, I'll be showing you another 164 skill Plymouth GTX, but with several key differences. First off, it's the 1969 Plymouth GTX. Secondly, it's a convertible and not a hardtop. Third, it's in a different color. And fourth, it's made by a different company, namely Greenlight. First we're going to unbox it, then we're going to do a walk around, and then a comparison to the 1970 Plymouth, at which point we'll surprisingly find a fifth difference. So stay tuned. Now this is what the packaging looks like. Uh, you can see right up top there, it says Green Light, GL Collectibles, Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car auction. Then it says 1969 Plymouth GTX convertible. And um, Green Light's Barrett Jackson models are replicas of real cars sold at auctions. And this particular one went for $176,000 in 2021. I personally got this for seven euro ninety from an eBay seller, so it's a few bucks cheaper than what I paid for the 1970 Plymouth GTX by Johnny Lightning. Here you can see the real car the model is based on, and they also provide a shot of the interior. That's pretty much it. Down here you just have some licensing. So let's turn this around and finally take a look at the model itself. Now, this is what the front of the packaging looks like. So let's unbox it. Greenlight's 1969 Plymouth GTX Convertible. Nineteen sixty nine was the last model year for the Plymouth GTX in the form of a convertible. They made seven hundred and one GTX convertibles for this model year, so it's a pretty rare car. What makes the sixty nine Plymouth GTX so unique is that it is one of the few cars out there that has a concave front. Like most cars from this era had a flat front. Modern cars tend to have a convex front, but this is concave. You can see how the headlights are slanted inward. So taking a look at the front of the 1969 Plymouth GTX, you can see that we have quad headlights with GTX written in the center of the grille, even on this 164 scale diecast. We've got Plymouth written on the top right corner, and it also comes with a license plate, although from here I can't read what it says. The headlights are just painted on, but I mean, they look okay, I think. Then at the very bottom we actually even have separate fog lights. You actually can open the hood on this green light, so that is nice. Since this is the GTX, the base engine is the 6.3 liter 440 cubic inch big block V8, where the Roadrunner's 335 horsepower has been increased to 375 horsepower. 
Other engine options included a 390 HP 6-pack or the 425 HP Hemi. And taking a look at the side of the 1969 Plymouth GTX convertible, you can see that this car comes with pretty flashy chrome wheels and they look okay. I guess they go well with the black. We've got a silver trim line right above the side skirts and it says GTX in front of the rear fender and we also have a little orange turn signal here. Taking a look at the back of the 1969 Plymouth GTX, you can see that the back looks completely different compared to the 1970 model year. Specifically, we have these two bigger taillights situated on either end of the back. And in the middle, we have GTX written above the trunk lock. It says Plymouth to the top right, and then we have the license plate and the rear exhaust as well. Just like the front of the car, you'll notice that the back is also concave and the taillights are angled inward, which is nicely replicated here. And since this is a convertible, we can actually have a really good look at the interior. And you can see that the steering wheel is a little too thick, it does have three spokes. And right there is the four speed manual shifter. It's got a little bit of detail for the front dash. And then we have the sun visors. However, the seats, I think, look really good on this model. They are in white. And you can see that they even have a little bit of a texture on them. So that looks pretty nice. And now we can move on to the driver's side. And again, there's really not much to see from this angle either. Um, but I think that overall, this looks pretty nice as a convertible. So, it definitely looks different to my 1970 Plymouth GTX Coupe. Quick look at the bottom of the car. Um, you can see that it says green light. This is copyright 2007, made in China. 1,766, is that my particular model number? Anyway, it then says 19, is that 39 or 89? 69, of course, Jesus. Plymouth GTX. Um, yeah, that's about it. With a little bit of a exhaust detailing here. Anyway. Nineteen sixty nine Plymouth GTX, nineteen seventy Plymouth GTX. Cars that sound so familiar to one another can still look quite different, especially when you put them side by side like this. You can see all the differences here between the two model years, with of course the additional differences being the difference in color, the fact that one's a convertible while the other is a hardtop with a vinyl top on it. One is made by Greenlight and the other by Johnny Lightning. And this brings us to the fifth difference that I had hinted at at the beginning of this review, which is that they are not equally scaled. You can see that Johnny Lightning is a little small. Um, one of the comments in my previous video had alluded to this, and it turns out that this model is actually more like 168 scale instead of 164 scale while the green light is true to scale. So if that bothers you, then I suggest stay away from Johnny Lightning, but honestly, these two models look so great and it doesn't really bother me. I'm happy to own them both. The only issue I have with my model are these scuff marks on the trunk, which really sucks. So that's it, guys. I hope you liked my review of the 164 scale 1969 Plymouth GTX convertible in this black exterior, white interior with the flashy chrome wheels of the Barrett Jackson series made by Greenlight. And um, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you in the next review. Take care, this is Imperial Diecast, signing out.